Lesson 1-3, Segments, Rays, and Distances. Yesterday, or previous class, we talked about lines, and you might know what, you might think you know what a line is, but today we, we get much more specific, much more precise. So look at this line, it's uh, got three points on it, A, B, and C. What do we call this line? Well, to notate a line, we put any two points on it, and we put a flat line with arrowheads on either side. Um, that's just one possible line since it goes on forever and ever. You can use A and B. You could call it AC. You could call it BC. So you've got all those choices. You could also even keep going. It could be BA, CA, or CB. Since it's a line, it does not matter where it starts, where it ends. You're just indicating the line. Now, looking at the same setup, what would you call a line that starts at A and ends at C, where A and C are the endpoints? We do that. And this is what we call a segment. And just like we did up above with switching the letters back and forth on a segment, we could have also called it CA. It's the same segment either way. It's got the same amount of stuff in it. And I'm being deliberately vague because we haven't really defined it more than that. One more step. Call a special line that starts at A and goes through C. So it's here and then it just keeps going. We call this array. An array looks like this. One arrow on this side. Now, this is not the same as this. So don't make that mistake. And we'll get into more detail on that as we go along. I warned you, geometry is very precise. You want things in a very specific way. So this is a good example of what we're talking about. And again, once you get good at it, it seems second nature. And not quite enough room. A, B, C up there. Let's go with from B. So let's make a array that goes to B, A. So it starts at B and goes towards A. And then another one that goes from B towards C. They're called opposite rays. And that means that they are on the same line and go in opposite directions. So since I've lost my line up there, there it is. You have one ray starts here and just goes one ray starts here and goes put them together you get the whole line we'll talk about that again another time so we've got a line we've got stuff but this is math class we need some numbers and in geometry what they said was all right we're going to create something called the ruler postulate it's pretty simple even though it's got a lot of words to it it just basically means I can take a shape and slap a ruler on it randomly anywhere I want. And we usually define it for you. Where's zero? Where's one? Where's negative one? So now you can actually say, oh, point A and C are so far apart. Point B and C are so far apart. So that's all the ruler postulate is. And postulate means we're making a statement. Again, we want to follow Euclid down this little journey of his. We start with a couple statements, a couple postulates, a couple definitions, and we build all of geometry on there. So this is the ruler postulate. We can throw a coordinate system on a line. He also said, we can add them together. And you've already done this. You have in algebra, You have the addition postulate. Well, same thing here. Pardon me. In algebra, we don't call it a postulate. We call it a property. In geometry, we call it a segment addition postulate. And we're just saying we can add them together. But we gave it kind of a funny little look here. A, B means... A number. So let's do it again. 
A, B, C, and slap our ruler up there and say A was at negative 2, B was at 0, and C was at 2. A, B would be 2. It means the distance from A to B, and it's an absolute value. It's always positive. B, C would equal 2, and A, C would equal 4. So that's all. Just slap some numbers on there. For example, what's the difference between negative 2 and 11? How far is it from here to here? Well, clearly it's 2 units from here to here, 11 units from here to here. Add them together, we get 13. Always positive. It's a distance. How far is it to your house? 10 miles. It's not negative 10 miles once you've gotten there and you're trying to figure out how to get back. Always positive. Now, big thing in geometry. You're going to get hammered over the head with this till you're almost sick. The concept of congruency. Why don't we just say equal? Because it's geometry. We're not working with numbers which are equal. We're working with shapes, lines, circles, polygons, quadrilaterals, triangles. We call this congruency. In segments, it's pretty easy. A segment's a segment. Now, it could be a segment like this that we happen to know is three long. We would say this segment over here is congruent to this segment over here. But here's the part. This doesn't mean segment the way I've written it. That means segment. I can say AB equals BC or a, the segment AB is congruent to segment BC. I will continually go over this until you actually understand it. It's tricky. Midpoint of a segment. Just a definition. Yeah, I'm tired of using A and C. Let's use something else. If this is four, then MN equals NP equals two. Or I could say MN. Is con segment MN is congruent to segment NP. Nothing complicated there. It's really just a notation you have to get used to. A bisector of a segment is a line, segment, ray, or plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. Try this again. Let's say it's a plane chopping right down the middle. It's plane Y. This is point Q. Pops out the middle there. R. Intersects at M. That plane has bisected QR if QR equals, pardon me, QM equals MR or Segment QM is congruent to segment MR. And that's it. You need to go play with these. Make sense of them. Not challenging, but it's going to take you a little while to get the notation right. This right here is the hard part. Remember the difference. If you're talking about shapes, two segments are congruent. Two distances are equal. Good luck.